Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, Orange County Supervisor John Morlach, speaking on the need for pension reform as we continue to celebrate our 15th anniversary season. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. So raise the banner, call the glory, let us join our fellow man. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a fantastic show for you tonight. Our guest for the entire show is John Morlock, uh, Orange County Supervisor. John, welcome to Straight Talk. Good to be here, Art. Thanks. John is an advocate of the need for pension reform. He was a leading proponent for Measure J, which passed in Orange County last November 75% to 25%. Measure J requires a vote of the people of the county before any increase or change in pensions for county employees. John, why did you advocate Measure J? Art, um, we're talking about public employee pensions, which are defined benefit pension plans, which means when you retire, your formula dictates what your benefit will be. So you are usually uh, computing your formula by how many years you've worked, times your concluding salary, times a percentage that's allowed by the formula. We've had a couple of increases in the last few years that allows for elected officials to improve the benefit formula after they've been funding for an old formula for quite some time, which means you create an unfunded liability overnight. And if you make it retroactive to the date of hire, you create an, a, a, a very large uh, debt. The, the city and county of San Francisco for over 100 years in their charter have had a provision that if you as an elected board want to and improve the retirement benefits of your employees, then you can negotiate that, but then you better figure out how much it's gonna cost you in unfunded liability costs, and then bring that to the voters, and then they decide whether or not you should approve that benefit. It's just a great way to protect the city and county. And so what happened is, over time, San Francisco is 100% funded in their pension plan Orange County is 73% funded. So San Francisco and that's had a, ironic because San Francisco is considered a liberal city and you think that they'd be spending like this though tomorrow and Orange County has a reputation of being conservative, but it's, it's the reverse. It's the reverse. So we said, why don't we follow the San Francisco model? <laughs> Maybe the first time Orange County has ever followed something <laughs> in San Francisco. It's a, good, it's a good idea. We might be a little late. Well, the people obviously bought it, 75% approved it and you were the spearhead for that that's correct uh, but it resonates with with the voters well, I understand financially long beach uh, 
in my judgment, improvidently, the city council some years ago voted to increase the pensions uh, under a law proposed by then Governor Gray Davis and passed by the legislature that gave cities the permission to, without mandating, basically a 33% increase in pensions. And the council passed it, voila, and we're still paying the price for that today. And as we both know, there are a lot of union pressures on elected officials at every level all over the country. And uh, people can be a hero on someone else's nickel by voting pension increases. So Measure J puts a check on that. It gives a little more power to the people because, as you mentioned, public employee unions can put an extreme amount of pressure on elected officials. They walk in and say, would you like to get reelected? If, yeah. if not, uh, then don't vote for our our proposal, but if you want to get reelected, we'll support you and make sure you don't have an opponent. It makes it much more difficult now to go to the entire electorate and say, okay, here's why we need this pension increase. We need to be competitive or whatever the logic might be. And just for the record, I support unions. I'm a member of a union and I think they do a lot of good work, but I, I disagree with, with, with some of their positions with regard to pensions. Well, uh, I'm not, and I'm not anti-employee. I'm pro-fiscal uh, stewardship. And so if you take a pension plan, as you mentioned, and, and Orange County's a little different, you took a fully funded pension plan and you increased your benefits by 50 percent. So now you, you have this liability, but you have this much cash. So you're one, one third, third unfunded, un yeah. right, overnight. Well, overnight, by just a vote of a city council. Or, and so or, now, or, now who pays that? Your kids, your grandkids? And you've cited the city of Vallejo as an example of what can happen. That city's gone bankrupt. Vallejo in the Bay Area is our canary in the coal mine. It is taking an approach that says, okay, we have now reached more than 70% of our budget in public safety expenditures, be it fire, be it police, and be it their salaries and benefits. It's pushing everything else out. Long Beach has 70%. It's unsustainable. And sustainability is, is, is the way you... You have to run your city. And yet our firefighters deserve to be paid. Our police have desired that they do a tough job and we want the very best. And the argument is we have to compensate them. And if we don't, they'll go elsewhere. We'll lose quality long timers. And in reality, that is debatable. Uh, yes, it's a dangerous job. Is it in the top 10 dang most dangerous jobs out there? No. Um, and, and what is a fair salary? Uh, does it require... Uh, uh, having 3% of your salary at retirement after 25 years. So after 25 years, you're earning 100000 and you multiply that by 25 times 3%, you're going to make 75000 at age 50 for life with a 3% COLA. Yeah. And then you can get another job. You can be a chief yeah, or it's, it's, lieutenant at another it's the American, department. It's the American way, John. It's, it it's not, doesn't make them bad, but it certainly makes those who uh, authorize that ability very poor money managers. And when you have a defined benefit pension plan that relies on earning a certain level of income every year, yes. i.e. 8%, and it makes 27% negative, like yeah. CalPERS did last year, yeah. you're behind 35%. We're talking $87 billion. Where, do that, where does that come from? Just for the record, our uh, guest is a CPA and former treasurer of Orange County, now supervisor. We're going to talk about the financial crisis that... Uh, the state and the country is in when we come back after these messages.